Hello there guys, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review and today we're going to be talking about Andre and Libby. So this is 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After Season 5 Episode 15 To Love and Obey. So the eBird's extremely thankful that this is the last we're going to hear of this family for the time being. Some of my subscribers have been getting into my comments and saying, eBird, why do you hate Charlie so much? Why are you Team Andre? Just so that you heard it loudly and clearly, I like neither Andre nor Charlie or any of the rest of his family. Therefore, that makes the eBird the real winner. And I'll say it again for the people at the back. I dislike both parties. As far as I'm concerned, Charlie is what you get when you cross a joke with a rhetorical question. Charlie was a disappointment to his parents that hoped for a human. By the time Charlie learns the rules of life, he's going to be far too old to play the game. Oh, who am I kidding? He's never ever going to work out how to play the game. And what can we say about Andre? Well, he's got the sort of attitude that would sound great being talked about in the obituaries. He's arrogant, patronising, demanding and annoying. He's a know-it-all, a moaner. And I could go on. Ah, what the hell? It's the end of the season. I will go on. He's a tantrum-throwing brat with no work ethic and is about as popular as COVID-19. So there we have it. I just thought I'd clarify my position fully before we get into this video. Very quickly before we start, guys, I'm so close to getting 35,000 subscribers. I can barely believe it. Thank you so much to everyone that subscribed so far. Help to push me over that limit by clicking that red subscribe button. And also don't forget to like the video. Right, so without further ado, I give you Elizabeth and Andre. So guys, it's my belief that Charlie simply wanted to pick a fight at this wedding so he could go back to America and say, I ended up fighting with the Moldovans. They're barbaric. It was awful. He wanted to disparage proceedings. That's what I think Charlie wanted to give as a present to his sister on her wedding day. And at the very end of the last episode, I pretty much thought he was going to get the opportunity to get it because Andre and he were on the dance floor and Andre grabbed him and said, right, outside. And that's where we pick up proceedings this week. So Andre was pushing Charlie outside. So he was more or less walking along behind him with his hand on his shoulder. And he very clearly was saying, you outside now, I want to talk to you. And the way he manhandled Charlie out of the room was very interesting to me because it was a very alpha move. And what's even more interesting is Charlie allowed himself to be manhandled out. So he either had his hand on his shoulder or his hand in the small of his back pushing him out the door. Charlie, if you think you're so big and broad and you're so alpha, how are you going to let somebody put hands on you? Very interesting. Once they were outside, Charlie said, are you trying to have a fight in Moldova? And he said, come on, dude, you're a bitch, dude. And he was really egging Andre on and really provoking him so he could fight. But Andre wasn't having any of it. And he said, you know, it's my wedding, right? Yes, he's noticed Andre. He's already subtracted the £30,000 it cost out of his dad's estate and off of the inheritance Charlie hopes to receive when Chuck deceases. So yeah, he's aware it's your wedding, all right? He's quite literally spent the last few weeks carefully calculating every cent. And Charlie continues, you're trying to play my family so that you can live in America and live a nice life. Do you know what I mean? You're trying to play my dad. And Andre said, we'll fight if you want, but not at my wedding. So what's going to happen is this. We'll have a ceasefire for tonight. We're not going to be friends tonight. We may not even be friends for life. And we will figure it out. Oh yeah, but not tonight. And then Andre said to producers, Charlie isn't happy that Chuck paid for the wedding. Yeah, the wedding cost about 30 grand and Charlie's got a grudge. And remember guys, I said to you last week, even though it looks like a really expensive wedding, I think it's a pretty much average wedding cost when you take into account the fact that it's in Moldova. And I don't know that I was that far off in my assumptions. And then Andre continues, Chuck paid for Charlie's wedding too. So he's a drunken hypocrite. Well, yes and no, because I'm sure he didn't pay for two weddings for Charlie. So there is that Andre, there is that. And Andre said to Charlie, it's your sister, it's my wife. I promised her I wasn't going to get into any trouble tonight. And this is why I won't fight with you tonight. And Charlie reluctantly agreed that there was going to be no fight. He could see there was no real provoking Andre. Oh dear, Charlie, you now run the risk of Andre choosing a time for the fight, which isn't conducive to your plans of having loads of people there to split it up when Andre undoubtedly gets the better of you. Your plans have been thwarted and your ass will be whooped. So they all go back into the wedding and Marcel walks over to Charlie. Charlie, what's happening? What's the problem? And Marcel continued, do I look like a bad guy? What do you think when you see me? And Charlie said, no, I'm not saying that you're a bad guy, but you always stick up for him. You stick up for Andre. Um, Charlie, of course he does. That's his best friend. However, Marcel, do you look like the bad guy? You do to the e-bird, because I tell you what you are, Marcel. You're what we call a crap mouth. 
you had no right to chat Andre's business to Chuck, Charlie and Jen and I don't know why you did. You may not be a bad guy but you're certainly a bad friend and a chatty patty. So next up Jen enters the fray. Jen's like a magnum of champagne on an empty stomach at the same party as your boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. She very rarely makes anything better. And Jen said, Like, I feel exactly the same as you, but like, let's deal with it when we get home. Like, Charlie, I like, totally agree. Like, you're so right. He's a punk, and we all know that, but we gotta do this for Libby. He's a poverty-stricken punk. And next up, Chuck comes over, and he says, It's my daughter's wedding. Charlie, you're completely drunk, you're totally wasted. And Charlie said, They're stealing your money, they're stealing your money, I'm protecting you. You're being weak and you're a pushover. Andre's in America and he's mooching off you. And Chuck explains to production that it's his daughter's wedding and so he doesn't really care. And Chuck then said to Charlie that Andre was the bigger man for walking away. And Charlie said, nope, that's because he's soft. He's scared, that's why he walked away. Oh, Charlie, come on, do you really believe that Moldovan policemen are soft? He was also a bouncer in Ireland. He's not afraid of a rock. He had hands all over you and you did and said nothing. We know who's soft here and it's not Andre. And then a bit later in the night of 50 fights, mum and dad both stand together with Libby and Charlie. And Charlie says, when we're back in America, we will see. I'm going to leave it for tonight, but when we're in America, I'm going to deal with things. Charlie, if you really felt that bad and that angry about everything, you would have just taken Andre whenever and wherever. And Libby said, just enjoy the night. You're ruining my wedding. And to production, Libby said, if it's not my dad fighting and Charlie fighting or Jen, then it's Andre who's doing some stupid shit. Can't we have one day where this doesn't happen? Oh, you can, Libby, but it would involve either divorce or a multiple slaying. Take your pick. If that day's not my wedding day, then when? And guys, this wedding to me is the wedding from hell. It's apparently just one big argument with a backdrop of awful Moldovan music. But what's this? It seems Andre wants to talk to Chuck. And Andre very rudely said, Come on, dude, I need to speak to you. Let's go over here, please. And unbelievably, Chuck just complied with his very rude request. Is that how you talk to your father-in-law? Interesting, very interesting. Then he said, listen, Chuck, I'm on my best behaviour tonight and I want you to secure all this stuff by handling your son. Andre, you're beyond rude. And Chuck said, I am handling things. And Andre continued, events in the past were not good, but I want to apologise and I want us to be more cordial. He then apologised again, but even his apology sounded like a swear word. I apologise for whatever. You don't sound that apologetic, Andre. Colour me unconvinced. And Chuck said, well, that's fine. All I want you to do is to appreciate what I do for you. And Andre said, I know you care about my wife and my daughter, and I know I've been wrong in the past with you, but from now on, for the sake of my daughter and your daughter, I want us to start getting on. And then Chuck said, I'm only half of the equation. Oh, Chuck, you're not half of anything. And Andre said, yeah, I know, I'm the other half. And at the end of this segment, Chuck gave us a little rundown, and Chuck said, well, I really don't know about this guy. He's got secrets. This guy's got chucked out of his own country. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, Chuck, if we do, it certainly won't be with bated breath. And that's where we leave the wedding from hell. So what does the eBird make to all of this? Well, I'll tell you what, there's far too much being put into this storyline. I can't help but to think we're being fed a line. It's just too much. I think that TLC have gone over and above in their scripting for this little family. And I've got good reason to believe that TLC are going to try to foist this boring group of inbreds onto us for yet another season. And they're just setting out the stall for what's going to be the storyline. So here are my reasons for thinking that this is all a crock of crap. And so the first thing is, Frauded by TLC, which is an Instagram site, have said that this family has re-signed with TLC to do another season. Why? There's nothing more to know. Nobody's interested. You guys can't even act, including you, Elizabeth. The second thing is, Elizabeth always says, I'm in the middle. I don't know what to do. My family are on one side and Andre's on the other. And I think Elizabeth's quite feisty. And I've got every reason to believe that if what went down in Moldova really went down, she would have said to her family, you lot ain't ish. Why are you trying to look into my husband's background? Andre hasn't done anything at the moment. She knows that her nuclear family is the most important thing to her now. So I think she'd keep things sweet with Chuck. Ignore what Jen and Charlie have got to say and back up Andre a little bit more than she does. So it doesn't really ring true to me. The next reason is that Charlie keeps on saying, I'll see you in America. Andre, we'll sort this out in America. Two weeks ago, you were all in America. You sorted nothing out, so it would seem. You're now in Moldova. There's no reason for you to hold back, Charlie. It's not as if you're worried about getting kicked 
out you don't like the gaff anyway. So why are you building everything up for this whole back in America? You're quite literally full of crap. And then there's Charlie's speech. Chuck had the mic and he was trying not to give it to Charlie. There is no way that Charlie would have managed to wrestle that mic out of Chuck's hand if Chuck didn't want him to have it. Let's face facts, Chuck is everybody's paycheck and the head of the family. I just can't see that occurring. And then there's the length of the argument. Every single person got involved, including Elizabeth's mum. Everybody had a little bit of input into this so-called argument and I can't help but think most of them would have just shut Charlie down and gone on with the enjoyment of the evening. But they seem to want to play this argument up just a little bit too much. And then finally there's a part where Chuck said to Charlie, Andre was the better man here because he walked away and you didn't. You wanted to fight. Well they were outside and Chuck was inside so Chuck Chuck, how do you know who walked away and how do you know who wanted to fight? You didn't witness it. Who knows? Maybe the producers told him. So guys, let me know what you think. Are there too many holes in this story? I think that there are. If these guys come back, I sincerely doubt that I'll bother to review them. I think that this couple are happy enough and I think all of this is for the cameras and for a paycheck. So let me know what you think in comments down below. Thank you so much for listening. Please, as I said earlier, don't forget to press the red subscribe button and I'll be back very soon with another review. You can follow me on Twitter at mbird99. You've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now.